This sad episode of my life begins with a guy we'll just call Fred. Fred was a local neighborhood guy who lived with his grandmother. Nice old lady. You know, Fred was one of those men who had failure to lunch. You know, he lived with his grandmother. Sometimes he would be on a, he'd be at the labor pool. Very inconsistent. Fred didn't have a work, good work ethic. Fred was like hustle man. He always was working on something, shaking, shaping something up. He was the gift of gab type dude. And one day we were heading to the labor pool because if you didn't know, labor pool, you have to be there at like 4.30 in the morning. And typically the bus doesn't run that early. But if you walk up to the MARTA station, the MARTA station starts running and it drops you off right there at the doorstep of the labor pool where you go in and you wait to be sent out. So one morning I was heading to the labor pool and he was coming along and we were just talking, you know, just chit chatting and stuff. Right. And he's like, how's that thing with you and Lucy working out? Everybody in the hood knew that Lucy and I was hanging out. We were pretty tight. And I was like, we're just friends. He's like, you hit that. I was like, no, he's like, I know she a hoe, but she a pretty hoe. He started laughing. I was like, no, I haven't done that. Well, I got a friend and you know, Typically, when people set you up with someone that doesn't work out, this is the epitome of this not working out. And he starts talking about like, you know, she cool, she live on the other side. And if you don't know about the West End, the West End had some amazingly beautiful homes. And that's what was the other side. And I was like, oh, she live on the other side, you know, that she was doing well, right? He's like, you know, I've been talking to her about you and she want to meet you, right? And I'm like, really? So, you know, we go to the labor pool. I get out that day. Fred gets out that day. Uh, I don't see him for another day or so. And then he's like, hey, what are you doing Saturday? Because she, you know, she want to meet you. And she the type of girl to put out real easy. You know, and I'm like. How do you know? Like, you tap that. He's like, no, no, she's always been my friend girl. Uh, we ain't never did anything. But, you know, she probably going to, you know, she, she probably like a big strapping dude like you. She like him clean. And that was another word for square. Saturday, we walk to the other side, which is a little bit of a hike. And it's a nice house. So I thought until we get in and then we go around the back and I start seeing all of the house had been subdivided into apartments. So she had lived in one of the apartments. So we go in and um, he lets himself in and she's not in the room. She's in the bathroom and she's just talking like, y'all let y'all self in, y'all get comfortable and everything. And she just sounds weird. She had like a weird voice. You know how sometimes you can tell a girl is cute by a voice? or even just the side of her face. There was something off about it. And then uh, she kept talking and talking. Then she popped out. I was like, yo, yo, Fred, Fred, let me holler at you for a minute on the porch, right? She's a Goonie Goo Goo, Eddie Murphy skit. She had like this little mustache deal thing going on. And Something was going on with her hair because she just, it wasn't a good look. It really wasn't a good look. I mean, she had the Fu Manchu mustache. I mean, it, it's real. Like, it was a real mustache. It ain't even like faint. You know, some women that have facial hair, you can barely see. Mm -mm. This sucker was bold relief. And she looked kind of weird because she was clearly an older woman. Fred and I on the porch, I'm like, man, she got a mustache, man. And Fred was like, oh, that ain't no big thing. You know, she got a nice body. And I'm like, you call that a nice body? She looked like a lumpy sack of potatoes, right? Because she, she had this pouch, this little pouch over her stomach. And then below that, there was another section where her ab kind of stuck out. This is something else about people in the hood. People in the hood have weird shaped bodies. Poor nutrition, lack of medical care. 
you could see anything up in the hood. And clearly she grew up a poor child. And she like, what y'all doing out there? What y'all talking? And then we go back in, she on the, she on the bed butt naked. And she like, oh, don't worry about Fred. He's seen me naked before. How you doing? And I'm just sitting there. And it was just this sight. She had this she had little, little mustache. mustache. She had these she had lopsided, lopsided titties. titties. She had this, she had little, this pouch. little pouch. And, and, the, the, and she went down. It got worse because she had these weird toenails. They were like sharp. They were pointy, all of them. Like she had filed them that way. You know, she's like, hurry up, man. Hurry up. You know, let's do this. I want my $50. And I'm like, $50? And then Fred, Fred like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, I told her, you know, you know, you know, she do a good job. You probably break off a of like something like 50 And she was like, $50 for this busted chick with the mustache? And, you know, I, at this point, you know, I didn't care. And I, I just said, it, and we ain't Fred and I ain't even going to the fortune. We didn't talk about it. And she's like, mustache? I just got a little facial hair. She had a little mustache. A little mustache and the lopsided titties and all this weird stuff that was going on so you know we we start talking and she gets up and she puts a robe on thank god because that was just one nasty little sight so fred and i uh we depart and on the way back i'm like fred you see i'm hanging out with lucy uh, i was assuming you know this would be you know something comparable this chick is busted from the toenails up. I mean, just the toenails were horrible. They were sharp. The, the polish was chipped. The polish on their fingernails was chipped. This girl looked like a mess. And I was like, and you told this chick I was going to give her $50? You know, at the time, $50 was a pricely sum. It was a huge chunk of money for someone making 200 bucks a week or like 180 because you know there was sometimes because my rent was 150 and I struggled sometimes to come up with enough money to pay my rent on Friday I remember one day I paid rent I had ten dollars left over after I paid rent you know it was a long long week so Fred and I you know we walking back and stuff and he come and sit in the room we chit chat some more then he's like I know another chick and I'm like, man, if this is the best you can do, because, you know, I was hanging out with Lucy and this was before Gail. So it was like at a certain point, your manly needs start wrapping up. You know, you wake up with your dick harder than Chinese arithmetic. Like, oh, oh, she better, man. She much, much better. Right. So he go ahead and use the house phone. He calls this chick. So we didn't roll out. And we get to, you know, she lives in a, a house that's kind of, you know, a little falling down. It ain't you know, like, like Lucy's house. It wasn't nothing like that. But, you know, it was a state of, you know, disrepair, needed work. So we go in and then there's this old lady in the living room. How y'all doing? What y'all doing today, right? And the old lady and we speak and everything. And then we go to the back and this chick she she's bald headed i mean she has like almost a shaved head and her eyeline her eyebrows are drawn on with like this pencil thing and she's got these long nails which are done and she don't have no breasts she's flat chested she's like skinny and she knock me i'm like fred you know fred and i like fred and i had a failure to communicate because this girl he had gassed her up and told her because in the hood, chicks will do something strange for some change. Most of them will, you know, you know like uh, this is what separated the really good girls in the hood. Because the good girls in the hood, because, you know, we, we had a lot of prostitutes around. So typically when dudes are driving, they give them a look because a prostitute will stare you down because she's like, yeah, I'm, I'm about that life. Whereas a good girl, she looked the other way because she don't want you to think that she's a prostitute. But. There was just some strange stuff. So I leave and the old lady's like, Are you leaving so soon? I was like, yeah, I got to go. I got to go. And I go back to my room. Fred stays with this chick. And I run into Lucy. And Lucy comes to the room and we just hanging out. And I, I tell her what's going on. 
And then Lucy's like, oh, I could set you up with some, you know, some nice girls. Because all of the, like, prostitutes knew each other. And I was like, what do you mean you could set me up with, you know, it's like, I know girls, I know people. And i like, but they do what you do? And she say some of them do, some of them don't. You know, it just depends. Everybody around here looking for a nice dude. And I'm just sitting here like how much I have fallen to be in this situation where I'm talking to my crack-headed friend about she hooking me up with a chick. She goes out. She goes out. You know, she's gone for like about an hour or two. She comes back. She's like, um, she's like, uh, I... A lot of them are not sure about you. They all think you a cop. And even the chicks who were not prostitutes still didn't want to deal with cops. That was just like, you ain't messing with no cop. Even though, um, you know, some of them did. And I was like, why? Because, you know, you, you know, because I was the neighborhood square, right? And she just had a hard time selling me to her peer group of hood hoes who would do something strange for some change or would just, you know, give it up. And I'm like, you think I'm a cop? And I'm like, she's like, yeah, they, they think, you know, because, you know, they think you a police plant. Because, you know, uh, a lot of people, they would talk to me and they would talk to me funny. And they like, I remember this one kid, he was walking behind me, leaning on me, like talking into the, microphone. the microphone. Yes, Mr. Officer. Yes, Mr. Officer. Because, you know, there were so many things going on in the hood that were illegal, that were wrong, that there was this paranoia that people felt that they were always under assault. They always felt that there was something strange, you know, that something that can happen to them. And, you know, that night I go to sleep alone. And then the next day I see Fred and Fred like, yeah, you know, I had to tap that out. You know, she needed some. And I was like, oh, good. You, you could do that, man. And at that point, I began to understand that Fred didn't have a lot of discernment when it came to women. He would do whatever because, you know, even though he said he didn't hit the goonie goo goo, um, I think he did. So we, we're going out here and this goes on and on and on. And then I meet another girl at the bus stop and she's cool. And she, she's a hood chick, but she's not a prostitute. You know, a girl that goes to work and everything, but she's kind of dumb. You know, I would talk about certain things and she just didn't get it. And that didn't really go, mo go anywhere because, I mean, you know, she was just not the brightest chick in the world. And it was just this situation of me going back to my room and just thinking, why I vibe with a prostitute and all these so-called normal girls, they just don't appeal to me. Well, you know, the goony goo goo, the not neat chick, the dumb chick. And then, you know, as it would be, I met someone and I'll talk about, you know, she deserves her own video, the Spellman chick. That'll be up next because that was something very nice, something very crazy. So... If you like these stories, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell, and if you want to avoid being up in the hood, go below. There's some courses to help you make some money so what befell me won't happen to you. Because I'm, I'm telling you, it was a long journey back from living that life.